Hey everybody, welcome back. Just throwing it out there about Salvador Ramos and you all probably know who that is by now. This came up quite a bit on a live stream. I did a live stream on Coffee Talk just last night. It came up a lot, people were asking my opinions. I looked into it a little bit more so that I could talk on it a little bit more. Now I might make a few people upset. If you're new to the channel and you don't know me and how I operate, I talk about things logically and from experience. Um, I don't talk about emotional aspects of things generally and that makes a lot of people upset because unfortunately people in the West, especially in the United States, are very very tied up in their feelings on everything and it clouds their judgment quite frankly and it makes them easy to manipulate. That's very obvious and you should be aware of that. If you're somebody who gets uh, flies off the handle emotional about every news story that comes along, you should probably slow down. Just saying. Um, if you're watching Penny University, the very last video got blocked. Talking about tracking dogs, if you missed that video, I'm sorry. That's how YouTube does me. I can't talk about tracking dogs apparently. But anyways, uh, Salvador Ramos, and there's a lot of conflicting information as the news agencies stumble over each other trying to get out there faster so that they can get attention because they want that attention. They want you watching them. That's how they make their ad revenue. Have made a lot of mistakes. I've heard a lot of different numbers all over the place. How many uh, people were shot? How many of them were kids? How many this? How many that? He's an illegal alien. No, he was born in uh, North Dakota. Okay, we'll assume he was born in North Dakota because that's the last thing that I heard and that he's not actually an illegal alien. Um, prior to investigating this a little further, when I did the live stream on, on the Coffee Talk channel, people were asking me what my opinion was about what could have happened. And the first thing that stood out in my mind was looking just at the pictures of this boy, this kid. I've heard he's 17 and I've heard he's 18. Well, I'll throw that out there also. I'm going to assume he was 18 years old. To me, it's still a kid. To the rest of the world, he's an adult. And that he was upset, apparently, about having not graduated from high school or some kind of uh, foolishness. But the first thing that I noticed looking at this boy's photographs, and keeping in mind, if you're not familiar with, with me or the channel, myself and the person behind the camera, we work in mental health. The first thing that stood out for me was the dull expression on his face in every single photograph I saw of this kid. And some of the photographs are gone now, by the way. You know, I know I pop back and forth, but I'm just trying to maintain my train of thought. Um, photographs of him in drag have mostly disappeared from the internet because apparently he was trans or thought he was and they don't want you making that association, so they're hiding those photos now. Uh, the other thing that about the pictures, ABC News, I think, already got caught up uh, doctoring the photos, making him look more Caucasian than Latino because his ancestry is South American. He's, he's Latin American, if you will. So he's darker than he's been looking in a lot of the pictures. But the dull expression is an expression that we see on clients every day, all of them, because these are clients who are in-house. They live in the facilities and they are very heavily medicated. And that dull expression is the expression of somebody who's on a lot of meds because it sucks the emotion out of you. You can't emote yourself. So you have this dull-witted expression. And when someone asks you, or so you tell them, oh well, to react, like smile, we're taking your picture. You get this, you get this fake, this is what I think a smile is supposed to look like expression because they're so loaded with medication. I don't know how many meds this kid was on, but I'm sure he was on something. Most likely for um, mood disorders, I'm assuming that he was very emotionally disturbed, if not, and you know, I've heard also that his parents had drug problems. I don't know if that's true. Um, if not a lot of emotional problems, it may be an actual legitimate physical disorder that cause uh, cognitive problems. 
although he did have a job. I, I believe he, they said he worked at Arby's, but also that he was violent, aggressive, rude. He was a cutter. I've read that you know, he sl sliced himself. He did things to hurt or injure people, shooting people with BB guns or picking fights, pushing people, hitting people, things like this. That expresses to me somebody who's very emotionally disturbed, plus his physical appearance, how his face looked, like I said, very dull uh, expression. And so people are sitting there, and this is the angle, this is where they twist your emotions. They waste no time, let no crisis go to waste, uh, politicians and activists uh, attacking Second Amendment rights now. Of course they're going to do that. And the, uh, the statements I've seen, somebody was saying something akin to um, that's because America has a deep-seated gun culture and they worship firearms and all of this. There's a lot of people who are really deep into a gun culture who really love their firearms who haven't hurt or even shot anybody. You know, they go to a rifle range or whatever or they just collect them. They're not looking to hurt someone. This is someone who wanted to hurt people. Now, one of the things that I brought up also when people were asking about, you know, what pops that off in the uh, discussion, the live stream on Coffee Talk, was I, I explained people who are on a lot of psych medication as being like a water balloon. You, uh, you attach a balloon to a faucet and you slowly fill it up with water and that water is the emotional backlash and the balloon is the threshold. The medication is holding that back to a point. Eventually it'll burst because instead of training people how to um, manage themselves and manage their emotion, manage their outbursts, their anger, their depression, whatever, in the West, and again, especially in America, they love dumping pills in you. Our clients have to take blood tests regularly to make sure they don't have liver or kidney failure because they're at the threshold of how many meds they can take before it kills them, literally. And also we've seen this with that anger threshold. We have one client, I think you know who I'm talking about, the one who throws haymakers. Mm -hmm. he, um, he'll sit, he's quiet. He'll be quiet for months and sits there like a zombie. And all he does is uh, write the same thing over and over again. Uh, on a piece of paper with a, with a pen. Okay, he's fine. He's not. He's got serious anger issues, but the medication holds it back until it can't. Then he jumps up out of his seat, and this could be months, starts throwing wild haymakers in the air, throwing punches so hard he's falling on the floor, striking at anybody and anything. He'll hit anything, anybody, because that anger, it, it has a cap where you can't contain it anymore. And that isn't just with people who have severe mental disabilities that are kept in a facility like this guy. That goes for anybody who's taken a lot of medication to manage themselves instead of learning how to actually manage it in the real world. Now, where's the failure here? The failure is that this is a societal problem. This is a, a, definitely a society problem. We're seeing more and more of it now. And again, they're going to attack Second Amendment rights and say, oh, well, we need to ban firearms and we need to do this and that. It was easier to get weapons when I was a kid than it is now, growing up in the 70s and 80s. And we didn't have these kind of problems because society had a different mentality and it didn't have anything to do with firearms or any other tools. It had to do with the people in society and how they view life. We have a generation, a couple of generations really, of kids coming up now that are so ignorant and selfish and angry that lack empathy and, you know, psychological training will tell you, and I've, I've taken child psychology, that if you don't start developing empathy by the time you're eight years old, you could be dealing with a psychopath by the time they're our age. Um, they, they, their emotional states are unstable. They're selfish, they're aggressive, and it's encouraged in our modern society. It's encouraged in the media. They get you go to a public school, which is a zoo. They tell you, oh, you're special and you're wonderful and you can do anything, and it's not the truth. It really isn't, I'm sorry. 
you know, life is hard out there. You're not going to, oh, if you believe really hard and you really want it, you're gonna be the next astronaut or the next president. No, you're not. That takes a lot of freaking work. It takes a considerable amount of work. Look at, um, and I've used basketball, the NBA as an example in the past. How many NBA players are there? How many people go into the draft? You know, for every person selected in the draft, they probably have maybe 5,000 applicants. You know, I could be exaggerating a little bit, but you get the idea. Most people are not going to make it. People that are successful on those levels are anomalies in life. And instead of teaching people that it's okay to just have an average life, they're building these kids up with no skills to, uh, to work with and then wondering why they're all upset and losing their minds and have emotional problems and are depressed and are killing themselves, stuff we didn't see growing up in the 70s and 80s. Plus, uh, you know, you can't put all of that on the system. If you're gonna ignore your children, the system is happy to raise them. Sorry, something was sitting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the system's happy to raise your kids and they will do a piss poor job. They are money pits. The public school system is a money pit, but it's your fault too, because you have these kids and you're like, oh, I love my kids and blah, 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 but nobody's gonna admit they don't really like their kids. And I'm sorry, in my experience, most don't. My experience working in uh, being a director of a daycare, being the director of a juvenile correctional facility, when I worked for the JJA in Kansas, working with public schools, with private schools, working for school bus companies, Durham and Laidlaw. Most parents, it's an act. I, I really believe it, they don't really care. And so they have these kids, they get them up in the morning, push them out the door to go to Head Start or uh, public school or whatever. Sooner or later they come home, the kids walk right by, go to a computer or a video game and ignore the parents. They don't see them or interact with them ever. They, they're like roommates that you barely speak to. But, oh, they're my kids and I love them. No, you're not working with your kids. You're not deprogramming the negativity that goes into them. You're not teaching them. You know, one of the commercials I find the most offensive, and I hate commercials, by the way, is ABC Mouse. You know the one I'm talking mm -hmm. about? The ABC Mouse, where she was like, oh, my daughter can count to 20. And I'm like, what? How did that happen? Why don't you know? <laughs> Why don't you know? Because your kid is learning from a, a computer program instead of from you, where she should be learning it from. If you're gonna throw your kid out to the wild, you're just as guilty as the system that's gonna take advantage of them and screw them up with all of these social agendas and all of this misinformation and no emphasis on true learning. And I saw a lot of that working for JJA. I bring it up a lot in discussions. Having uh, students uh, 16, 17, 18 years old that are graduating from a high school or you know close to graduating from high school that have like a 3.8, 4.0 average honor roll students. These kids can't read the newspaper. They can't operate a can opener. They can't operate, uh, you know, we have the, had, because I don't work there anymore, life skill classes. They couldn't run a microwave properly. They couldn't sweep them off the floor. They don't know how to fill out a check. They don't know how to fill out a job application. They can't count money. You ever seen uh, 17 and 18 year olds sitting at a table in tears with little trays from Dollar Tree of little, the play money trying to count, I can't do this, why can't you people leave me alone? You can't count cash. Even illiterate people when we were growing up knew how to count their money. Mm -hmm. You weren't getting over. This the real seat, seat of the problem and it's not getting any better. It's not gonna get any better until parents take responsibility for themselves and stand up and pull their kids under their wing where they belong. Stop trying to be your kid's friend Stop trying to buy them off and, and buy things for them and just try to try to get along with them and actually parent if you even can identify that because you may not have been parented properly. I wasn't. It took me a long time to figure it out, honestly. I'm not just preaching here. I've been through it. You had a better experience with parenting <laughs> than I did, honestly. You had a, you had a, a fairly decent upbringing. Mm -hmm. Mine wasn't. I had an abusive, neglectful, ne neglectful mother who didn't care if I lived or died, honestly. And 
Even though I wasn't as bad as her, I still didn't know what I was doing the first time around uh, raising a child. I got better and better as I learned and realized my mistakes, but you've got to be willing to realize those mistakes and progress. If your kids aren't getting educated properly, so the, the public school and media and society is wanting to raise your kids and you're letting them. And this is the result. Because again, we didn't see this growing up. Yeah, and a couple of things that you said. One, okay. um, society wants to tell you how to feel and how to act in That's a situation. True. So it could be a positive or a negative. You, they tell you this is how you should feel right now. And then people put on this act and, it, and they never ask themselves, do I actually feel it that way? Do I actually care about this? Or do I really care about this, but I'm acting like I don't because society says I shouldn't care about this or I should hate this or I should love this or whatever. And um, people, and even adults, it's not even kids because I've seen some adults react to some things and I'm sitting there like, why are you reacting the way that you're reacting to this situation when it doesn't warrant that type of behavior or that type of emotion? Mm -hmm. And because of that, you will find 10 kids that, was, that were told that you should be angry about this situation. And then when they find that one person that's like, oh, you ridiculous for being that way, they don't know how to act and they fall to pieces. They have a nervous breakdown. They have a violent reaction yeah. because they're not getting the um, affirmation that they thought they were going to get. And they don't know how to argue or debate. They yeah. think whoever's the loudest or the most vulgar wins the argument. Mm-hmm. And they, they don't know how to lose. And, um, you know, because now you play on a sports team and everybody wins. You don't have a losing team. Yeah. So they don't know how to lose. And they don't know how to fail because society tells you that you're a winner at everything. And I know we see that in a um, workout video. You're a winner just for turning the video on. You didn't work out a bit, but you're a winner. Yeah, you showed, you showed up. up. You showed up, that's enough. No, it isn't. No, and, it is not. And back to that guy, I read some things about him, and it says that he was 18 years old when he bought the guns. And it said that he bought it from a legitimate gun shop. Mm -hmm. But it also says that he's an illegal alien. And if you bought a gun from a, a, a reputable, legitimate gun shop, you're not an illegal alien. Because yeah, you, you if you're be. if you're an illegal alien, you don't have any form of ID, or you're not supposed to have any if ID. If that's true, because remember, I've also read that he was born in North Dakota, which right. would make him a citizen. Right. So, it, so it's, it's a lot of conflicting yes. um, information. You which know, is why you need to pull your, like I said in the very beginning, take your emotions out of it, put it away somewhere, mm -hmm. and look at it logically. Slow down. Yeah, and and we live in an emotional society where they got to push emotions on every and anything and it's like no we need to just sit down pump the brakes a little bit and think about this mm -hmm. and you know be emotional probably a little later on um but not right now because we don't know what the truth is and you can't believe nothing the media says yeah you know and it's just ridiculous and yeah parents don't Parent, the altering of the photos is proof of that. that you yeah, but people that. are going to see that. And, uh, yeah, so what? You know, or they're not going to believe it and this and that. And it's going to get ridiculous. And yeah, parents don't parent their kid. They treat the kids like they do their dogs. How many dogs in our neighborhood? The people got a fenced in yard, but the dog is still on the chain in the yard. Crying all day and all night. All night long, but oh, they but can I say, yeah, I got yeah. a dog, and it's just like, the kid. oh, yeah, I got three kids, and they're on the road students, um, but they can't read and, you don't and know write. Them. You don't know them at all. Not really. Yeah, and how can your kid be an honor roll student, and they can't read or write? You know? And again, I have literally seen this working for the Juvenile Justice Authority. I've had uh, hundreds of clients like that in that facility. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary, but that's what we're coming to. But, you know, that's, that's what society has. That's what's accepted. Um, 
and I remember and I always think about this a viewer had said you know um, if you hate your kids if you send them to public school and when he said that I was like <laughs> why on earth would a person say that but then I thought about it yeah and I looked at it and, and, and I compared it, you know, public school and the, um, the, the experience I have from public school and things I've learned after and how many kids are in public school and can't read or write and parents don't realize it until later and then they blame the public school and I agreed with the person because I understood yeah. what they were saying. Maybe the was. way they said it kind of kind of hit me but I understood fully what they were saying and we get it that you know some people most people because my thing is you should always homeschool first and for a second choice private school where you at least have some input into what the curriculum is um, and I we get it there are a lot of people who can't do that at least deprogram your kids mm -hmm. when they come home find out what they learn talk to them about it you know reinforce legitimate studies yeah. or when we were kids it was the three R's they called it yeah and reading writing arithmetic and arithmetic I know arithmetic starts with an A but that was yeah, that, was, that was the euphemism that they used those three things if you have a good strong structure with the, the rest of it will fall in place if you even need it how many people are going to be using algebra and trigonometry no none of them uh, hardly anybody unless they go into the sciences and then you're not really doing it anyways. The calculator is. Yeah. When we were kids, you couldn't use a calculator. You get expelled. Yeah. You, you got in a lot <laughs> they of trouble. They would send you home if you had a calculator. Yeah. Um, but I know my parents. My mom made me read to her mm -hmm. all the time. My dad taught me how to count money. He would pull actual money out and make me count it. And he would take me to the store, give me money to buy something and make me say, okay, this is how much change I should get back. I would get my change back. And then I had to count it while we were standing there. That was his method yeah. of um, teaching. But that's you know? direct interaction. You know, a yeah. child learns more from association than they do from pronunciation. They can't learn to be a good person or a smart person out of a book yeah. or out of a, a classroom setting. But, you know, this is what we have and the only way to change it is for you to change it. Um, As yes. an individual, mm -hmm. because really you can only change yourself and affect the people that are directly connected to you. Yeah. I.e. your children, for example. Yeah, if it's four in your family, it's your four and no more. Because you, you can't, know? Cha you're not going to change the whole world. No. And this is also part of the problem is that impatience of modern society, that they want instant results. They want instant results. You're not going to get instant results and get quality. No. You're not. Okay. But they also tell you that you you can change the world. You can't. No. I mean, if you honestly look at history, how many significant people were there? Really? Really. Actually If you really, I mean, just think on the top of your head, how many, and then compare it with how many people were on the earth. Right now, what is close to 8 billion? Yeah. How many, six, and I'm not talking about YouTube influencers, Kim Kardashian. Politicians. And, and um, Beyonce and all of them things. I'm talking about people that actually do something like Gandhi, Martin Luther King, um, Jesus, you know, <laughs> I, yeah, people, I know what you mean. people like that, people that actually had an impact on society yeah, a as a one. whole. Yeah. And, and I mean, um, in their, their community and it stretched out to around the world, how many people had an impact, the uh, YouTube influencers, Facebook influencers or whatever you call them, um, they don't have an impact not like they're not changing the world yeah you know yeah you might you put up some videos and you get a million views but did you change anything no and yeah. you're i don't believe in that influencing bit either because i think like-minded individuals seek you out mm -hmm. also a lot of those systems they have bots so you can purchase likes views subscribers all of that even comments you can purchase now yeah. that's why there's that argument with elon musk and twitter where he had, did an independent study and he's like hey you know more than 25 percent of these accounts are fake you know why am i offering you this much money and you know i'm only getting like 75 percent of what i'm what i'm buying he, he's got a legitimate argument mm -hmm. it's a legitimate argument
but I know it's a lot to it's a lot to absorb and like I said there's a lot of things people may not want to hear um, but just think about it that's all we can ask mm -hmm. is to just try to get people thinking remember you can't change the whole world you can only change yourself um, they love telling you that you're gonna change the whole world and they love blaming the past because we hear that oh it's because of boomers this and boomers that and you know every generation has to listen to their peers talking about how the previous generation screwed everything up but they don't fix change or help anything hmm. and right now that generation is people like Greta Thunberg and what's his name hog mouthpieces they yeah, they're blah 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 foul mouthpieces yeah. they're vile and they're vulgar and that's the that's type of people now. Yeah, that's the type of people that, that that wants to rule the world. They want to be your next um, uh, prime ministers and presidents and whatever other heads of states they are. That's what they want to be. Yeah. Vile, vulgar. They're not going to fix or change anything. No. They're not. No, they're going to just say the next thing that's trending. And blame our generation. Yeah. Or or whoever was before us. Um, it's like Greta Thromberg says, it's, you know, you, you stole my childhood. No, Greta, you sold it. Yeah, you, you know? sold it and for, um, for, for um, fame and, and fortune, for some hilarious. trinkets. I had shown it in a, um, in a video some months ago because they had a picture of her and her mother sitting in their office and the office chairs looked really unique and I looked them up and they sell for $10,000 a piece. Do you own a $10,000 office chair? They had two of them. Think about that. Yeah. They let that sink in just a little bit. But uh, hmm. it's a lot to unpack. It's yeah. a lot to unpack. We invite you to unpack it with us if you have any thoughts. Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you saw random cat or dog images, they are strays that we help to take care of. We take the pictures ourselves and it actually helps with YouTube's uploading algorithm, although it didn't help with the last video on Penny University. If <laughs> Please do give the video a thumbs up, share it if you can, subscribe if you knew all that good stuff. If you want to help the channel out or help out the strays, there are links for that down below. Every little bit helps and we sure do appreciate it. And if that's it, then what more can I say? But stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come.